Welcome back. Last weekend, we were joined by Colorado Congressman Mike Kaufman, the man who has represented Colorado's 6th Congressional District since 2009. His election to a sixth term may be one of his toughest battles yet. A New York Times-Siena poll released earlier this month shows Democratic challenger Jason Crow leading Kaufman by 11 points. And Jason Crow is here in the studio today. You must be pleased by those numbers. Well, it, you know, certainly our message is resonating, but I don't spend my time focusing on uh, polls and, and surveys. You know, I'm going to continue to run an uh, aggressive campaign and, and meet with uh, thousands of folks in the district and send our message out there. And uh, I, I think our message is certainly uh, being well received, but we're going to not take anything for granted and push hard for the next 40 days. This is a unique district because several Democrats have gotten close to unseating Mike Kaufman. What is it that makes you think that you could do it this time? Well, and we live in a very different world than we lived in just two years ago. And there's always this instinct to look back over previous uh, battles fought and, you know, try to figure out lessons learned. But the world is a very different place now. You know, since this district was drawn over six years ago, I'm the first combat veteran to run in this race. Uh, I'm the first parent uh, to run against uh, Mike Kaufman. So when I talk about immigration and health care, uh, environmental issues and gun violence, I talk about it as a father. Uh, and I'm the first first-time candidate, right? My message is different. The reasons I'm doing this, uh, I believe, are different. And, you know, that message is being well-received. And, you know, Mike Kaufman also lives in a very different world, too. You know, two years ago, he made the fundamental promise of his campaign, a, cam a promise that he knew that he had to make to the people of this district, and that was to stand up to Donald Trump, plain and simple, as he put it. Well, you fast forward to today, and he has a 96% voting record with Donald Trump in this administration, the number one record in the state of Colorado. So he's failed in keeping that promise. So you have no political experience. Why? I mean, people might hold that against you, that you have none whatsoever. Why should they? I, I'm not. I, I reject the notion that you have to spend your life in politics to serve this country and this community. You know, I'm, the, I'm of a firm belief right now that you look at what's happening in Washington and career politicians like my opponent, you know, they failed us. They failed the country, right? You look at the dysfunction and the, and the partisanship uh, and, and, the, and the culture of D.C. And, and where it's brought us today. You know, what we need in America right now is a new generation of leaders that have proven themselves in service to this country and their communities outside of politics who can come in and clean this mess up. Right? And I've proven myself in service in uniform and to this community as a veterans advocate and other capacities. And I'm going to take those lessons, I'm going to bring them to D.C. and we're going to move forward again. You mentioned dysfunction, the Kavanaugh hearings. Mm. How, how should that have gone? How would you, how, how should that go? Well, the starting point is, is we have to believe women. Right? I believe Dr. Ford. Uh, and I looked at her testimony, I watched her testimony yesterday. It was, it was deeply moving. Um, it, it, was, it was believable, uh, and it was troubling, right? And, and what we're looking at here is a job interview for a lifetime appointment on the United States Supreme Court. You know, this process was botched from the beginning. I believe Dr. Ford, and it's time for Brett Kavanaugh to withdraw himself from this process. Mm. All right, immigrants make up a good portion of the 6th District. The president has said some harsh words about immigrants. We're still separating families. What, what do you have in mind that could remedy that? And can you? Yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, we, we need new leaders to go into Washington who are actually willing to use the tools that are available to members of Congress to hold the administration accountable. Right? My opponent went down to the border and took a photo uh, outside of a detention facility and said he's addressing the issue and then he seems to have moved on. Well, there's still almost 400 kids that have not been reunited with their families. Right? There are people spread out across the country that we don't even have accountability over. Right? What we need are members of Congress who are willing to issue subpoenas, to hold hearings, to call in the members of these agencies, to, ha to have them give testimony, to ask the tough questions about what you're willing to do about it, and to have a Congress who's willing to make it a priority to make sure that in the name of the United States of America that this moral uh, abomination stops that we reunite these families. These are all things that members of Congress can do today if they were committed to doing it. Uh, we have seen the ads about you on television. Uh, crooks and con men, that's who Jason Crow represents. Do you? <laughs> you know, uh, one thing is certain. You know, career politicians like Mike Kaufman, uh, who don't have the ability to defend their own record, are going to spend all of the time that they have available 
talking about anything other than what he is doing in Washington and his 96% voting record with Donald Trump and what he's failed to do, right? So it's no surprise to me that he's trying to divert attention away from his record and his failed leadership and to try to attack me, right? I, that, I, I knew that from day one coming into this campaign that he would try to do that. I am proud of the fact that I've served this country and this community uh, and I've uh, received awards for my pro bono service to veterans and to their families and to the larger community. And I'm proud of my legal career. With about one minute left, what do you think are the key issues in the 6th Congressional District that you plan to address immediately if elected? Well, we need to clean up the corruption in Washington, and we need to have a member of Congress that's willing to push back on this administration and their policies, all the way from uh, over uh, or aggressive enforcement by our agencies that are tearing families apart today and every day in the 6th Congressional District to addressing uh, gun violence in our community to fixing health care. Right? We have a Congress right now that's trying to blow up the health care system. And people are paying for it. You know, just last uh, month, uh, there was a, an assessment that, that shows that the efforts to sabotage this health care system that Mike Hoffman uh, has, has been a part of, right, voting to remove the individual mandate in December as part of the, the Trump tax scam, uh, have, have cost families in this district thousands of dollars. Right? We need to protect this system, but improve on it and move forward and move towards complete coverage so for Americans. So keep the Affordable Care Act. Yes, we do need to keep the Affordable Care Act, recognizing that it's not perfect, that the premiums are rising too fast, but 20 million more Americans have health care under the ACA than before. 600,000 Coloradans now have health care. You know, kids can stay on their parents' coverage until they're 26. Protections for those with pre-existing conditions. You know, uh, uh, li eliminating lifetime caps, all things that have, have saved people's lives and allowed them to avoid bankruptcy. These are important things. We need to build on that system and improve it. Jason Crow, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Ann. Back in a moment.